Hi guys, this is Fu from Fox Tech and today I'm going to show you a brief introduction about the RMLC's new UHF system. Uh, you may be familiar with the old system which uh, has a like a transmitter module plug on this one but this one is totally different. So let me show you one by one. This is a transmitter module which is very huge with the heat uh, reduction uh, placed and also a cooling fan on it which help you to keep it as the best performance all, all the time. So the, this uh, transmitter has, we see on the back, it has a printed like manual things and uh, he has uh, two buttons, the PB1 and the PB2. The PB1 is for the binding and also uh, for the failsafe setting. And the PB1 is for the copy, uh, for copying this data to a new receiver module. Okay, so you can see one very, very uh, thick wire to the adapter module and here is the also for the uh, powering the fan. And uh, what's on the side you can see some deep switches for you to choose the working frequency and also uh, choosing the working mode for it. And uh, what's on the top you can see a, a detachable uh, antenna, it's the UHF antenna. Uh, okay, so it's the adapter module which is uh, connecting to the transmitter and uh, they have to keep away for 30 centimeter to avoid any interference. So for the adapter model, it has 20 uh, pins on it for 20 PWM signals and also it has one SBUS and one PPM signal on it. Uh, so it also has some function pins to control the idle function and also other functions of this transmitter module. Okay, here what you are seeing is uh, RMLC's new UHF receiver module. It has 20 pins, 20 ports on it uh, for you can connect up to maybe 20 uh, servos and uh, which is very cool and what's on top you can see two very special UHF uh, receive, receiver antenna um, in very different shape uh, meaning it has very nice performance so here is some LED on it you can see it's up to 5 LED to indicate the noise, surrounding noise, and also to help you to see the receiver's RSSI signal strings. What's on the side of it, you can see two buttons. One is the EMI scan and one is the binding. And for the EMI scan, you can just, if you activate this function, your receiver can scan the surrounding interference to avoid them, which is very cool. And this is the bind button for you to bind your receiver module with the transmission module, uh, which is very easy to use. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to bind the receiver module with the transmitter module. So first, use a screw uh, screwdriver to press on the bind button and power the receiver module up. Okay, you can see the LEDs are flashing, and then I'm going to I use another battery and then I'm going to press the PB1 button and the power on the transmitter module. Okay, then wait. Okay, after several seconds you can hear a beep sound from the transmitter module, meaning the binding procedure is complete. So now just power off the transmitter and the receiver module. Okay, then power them on again. Okay, now I can use my radio to control this servo. But actually you can see my, my 8 channel receiver model uh, for, uh, for this radio is just here. It's here. Actually when you are going to use it, this receiver will be, will be on the ground, but not in the plane. Uh, what's in the plane is this uh, receiver. Okay, so you can see what's on this receiver, you can see the full LED lights are, are already lighted, meaning full transmit, meaning full receiver signal because my re, uh, transmitter model and the receiver model are very near. So, uh, if you are seeing the this kind of uh, LEDs uh, are less and less, the meaning the re receiving signal is very weak. So, uh, what I'm going, what I'm using is the test mode. Uh, you can just uh, uh, put down the deep switch 4 to enter the testing mode. In this mode, the transmitting power is very limited, so you can use this mode to test the control range, for example. So, uh, like I said, there's some function pins on this adapter module. Uh, here's one is idle. 
uh, I can use one of my switch channel to control the idle mode to turn off the transmitter power. Okay, now the transmitter is turned off. You can see an idle LED lighted on uh, on this uh, detector module. So, meaning no transmitting power from this transmitter module. Okay, back to work. I can control my servo again. Why we need the idle mode? For example, because this transmitter module consumes a huge power. So, for example, this kind of a battery maybe can work for less than half an hour if you use a full power. So uh, one, one reason for this, you are going to use the bigger power. Another reason is uh, if you are not going to, not flying your plane, just uh, enter the idle mode to, to make your plane in the fail-safe mode. So talking about the fail-safe, I'm going to tell you how to set, set a fail-safe on this UHF system, which is very easy. And uh, let's go back from the working mode and I can control. And uh, for example, I put my servo at this position and then press the transmitter module's PB1 button for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's done. Now if I, uh, for example, I turn off the power on my transmitter module, the servo will go back to the failsafe position. See, it's working. Okay, also you can use idle mode to make the receiver enter the failsafe safe, fail safe mode. Okay, it's entering the failsafe mode. That's very easy. Now I'm going to show you how to use the EMI scan function. That's the price on the button and power on the receiver. As you can see, the LEDs are flashing, indicating the surrounding noise. Uh, it's uh, scanning the surrounding noise by its two antennas. So if I, because I'm using a radio here, if I put it close to my radio, you can see more LED light up. And if there's no LED or maybe one or two LED light up, light up meaning the surrounding interference is very, very limited. Okay, why uh, we need this function? Because uh, there are many equipments on your multi-copter or on your plane. So uh, in, in order to know the surrounding interference, like UHF noise from other equipments, you are going to use this function to test them. So if you are seeing three LED light up on your, on your receiver module, meaning the surrounding interference is too much, meaning one, you need to move the receiver further from other equipments, and two, meaning you have to use alternative equipment to replace the current ones. Okay. So this is a brief introduction about the RMLS new UHF system, which is very nice and very easy to use because with the 20 channels, I can use two receivers, two radios to control. Uh, for example, I can use two radios and the two receivers to make 20 channels controlling, which is very cool. I can use uh, maybe two guys to control one plane together. I really like this kind of system because, because it's easy to use, has many channels uh, av available and also massive transmitting power. Okay, this is Fu from FoxTech and I hope you like our video and our video channel and if you like it then just uh, click on the like and uh, subscribe under this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.